Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. I'm Shireen Bhan and we're coming to you from uh, NASCOM, our virtual studio that we've created here. Joining me today is the president of NASCOM and the chairman of NASCOM, Rishad and Devjani. Thanks very much for joining us. We're here to talk about a new program or a new initiative that NASCOM has launched. It's called Accelerate 10X. What's the point of this, Devjani? You know, NASCOM has been nurturing the startup ecosystem for a few years now. Is the attempt now to go from scaling up, from starting up to scaling up? And what do you intend to do with this? Well, I think you said it, right? Uh, so we've we launched NASCOM 10K in 2013, you know, five years back, uh, when there were roughly a handful of startups in India. And the goal at that point was in 10 years, we will reach 10K startups, right? And we'll create India as a thriving uh, startup ecosystem. Five years down, we are the third largest mm. startup ecosystem in the world. And, and it's a growing startup ecosystem, a 7% growth. But there's something else happening, and that's the way technology is changing everything yeah. around us, yeah. right? Uh, the advances in technology is providing opportunities to the entire industry to innovate, to disrupt, mm. and to find the kind of solutions to India's problems that we've never been able to find till now, mm. right? But that requires a very high level of uh, innovation, a very high level of capabilities, um, and that requires scale. And I think it's time to look at the startup ecosystem and see how do we take them to that next phase where they can drive the kind of disruptive innovation that is required for India that will also bring in the scale. So Accelerate 10X is an initiative under 10K that will focus on bringing together the entire ecosystem, okay. right? From the accelerators to the VCs to, uh, to the tech companies to come together and work together to focus on 100 of the best deep tech startups in India. Okay. Invest in them, work, in, work with them for around six months mm. to build the capabilities that will allow them to innovate, innovate at um, global level okay. and you know create the kind of solutions so, that's needed. So that's the aspiration Rishad and I think that your target is what to create about 15 billion dollar companies by 2023 uh, you know and since we're talking about deep tech this is a focus area for the government as well is NASCOM working with the government to put the AI policy in place for instance I mean what do you need from the larger ecosystem from a policy perspective or do you believe that you at NASCOM along with the venture capital uh, as well as the tech companies companies can pretty much chalk the course out. No, I think a part of the magic of NASCOM is that it works very closely with the government. So in fact, at the launch of Accelerate NX that happened a few minutes before this, we had Anna Roy from Niti Aayog very much as a part of that conversation. So I think the magic is being able to bring all these different stakeholders together, as Dave Jani said, right? How do you bring government together? How do you bring corporates together? How do you bring venture together? How do you bring the skilling together? How do you bring these different capabilities together to ultimately create magic in building these companies because it cannot work in silos. Mm. And that's the, the, the credibility of NASCOM and the magic of NASCOM, that it's able to work across these different stakeholders, that it has the credibility to work across right. these different stakeholders. And I think so, that's very powerful. So how aligned is this going to be to the government's AI vision, which basically focuses on languages, which focuses on precision agriculture, uh, which focuses on healthcare? Are you also going to be nurturing companies that try and address those problems? Yeah. So I think the magic of deep tech, Shireen, is that it's able to solve big problems on scale, right? Whether it can be everything from healthcare and citizenry services, which the government would mm -hmm. care about, to better customer service and cross-selling, upselling with your own private enterprise customers, right? And so there's a very cr clear overlap mm. with what the government is trying to accomplish as well. And so it works very, very much hand in glove, I think. Okay. Uh, any more clarity on when we are going to see the AI policy being put in place? I think it's or they've already started. I mean, it's uh, they've already started implementing the policy, mm. right? Um, you see new partnerships happening every day with respect to research, with respect to skilling. NASCOM is working very closely with the government to drive the skilling agenda, right. or the reskilling agenda. So, so, how much of a challenge is that going to be? I was going to ask you this question a little later on, but since you brought this up, the skilling problem or the skilling deficit, if we were to truly capitalize on this deep tech opportunity. I mean, NASCOM has put out a number of, what, in excess of $900 billion is what this sector could contribute by 2030. But do we have the capabilities? Do we have the skill sets in order for us to be able to maximize on it? Uh, that's the biggest job ahead of us. We have to build 
and, and this is one of those cases where I don't think failure is an option. We have to come together and we have to build this capabilities or the skills uh, to be ready to leverage the technologies that Rashad just mentioned uh, to find the solutions to, to and innovate at the way at the rate at which India needs to innovate. Mm. So what's the plan for, for the skill part of this problem? So we've launched an initiative, NASCOM Future Skills, which is looking at the technologies, there are nine technologies which will have the biggest impact on job creation in India. These nine technologies create roughly around 55 to 60 new job roles. Mm. So we're working with the industry to reskill around 2 million of the ID workforce in India, which mm. is 50 percent of the total uh, strength in the next four to five years for these new job roles. So that's an ambitious goal, yeah. and the government is completely supportive mm. and partnering in the same. Mm. And we hope uh, very soon to also take it to universities, to okay. colleges, so that we can start building the pipeline mm. apart from reskilling the current workforce. Shree, mm. just to add to that, one of the challenges today across organizations, across building these deep tech companies, is the availability of the right skills, mm. yeah. right? So building out those skills yeah. is a core core requirement for Absolutely. winning yeah. and that's a big big focus across industry mm. across companies uh, it's going to be a huge huge focus and getting that right what, what is, is a start of, to winning and what is the kind of investment that we're talking about in order for us to be able to bridge the skill deficit I mean you've got a target of reskilling two million people what is it going to take in terms of investment where the, and largely at, it's being supported by industry I mean there is no government spending on it uh, as such so I think far. of it as an ecosystem today what what NASCOM has no, done that's why I call it an put, investment yeah we've put together a platform right the platform today has content 30,000 pieces of content it has 200,000 members or already mm. participating on that platform it has 10 to 15 large companies today who are already sort of very active on that platform but it will be a marketplace mm. and people who use those services and want to build those skills will pay for it it won't be sort of one party that pays for the reskilling sure. of the ecosystem mm. overall mm. it will be people who want to participate in that and certainly government can play a role government can play a role in terms of providing some level of support mm. perhaps some sort of a subsidy to two individuals who want to reskill and upskill but ultimately it will be people who benefit from those services mm. paying for those services. So I would think of it like a marketplace. Okay. See the beauty of NASCOM and I feel very proud to say this, the one thing that we do which very few people can do or organizations is bring that ecosystem together. Yeah. Right? Um, and, and bring them together in a way that they don't usually come together. Yeah. So, um, for example, the platform has some of around 30 or 32 of some of the leading content providers mm. across the world. And they've all come together to solve this problem, right? right? So when you have a problem that is going to impact the world, mm. not just India, mm. you will find that industries will come together, companies sure. will come together, and if, if they believe in that cause, and uh, do their best to solve it. And, okay. uh, Enabling that is the magic. Uh, it, it, and it's going to be a crucial piece in order for us to be able to achieve the kind of targets that you've set out. You know, we talked about the skilling deficit. Let's talk about funding, Risha. Then, uh, you know, NASCOM says that uh, funding has grown about 70% year on year, specifically for enterprises that uh, operate within this space. But what's the bet uh, in terms of patient capital? Uh, do you believe that that is going to be critical in order for us to be able to build this out? Absolutely. And I think you have to appreciate with deep tech that the risk reward equation yeah. is different. Mm. Right? And you've got to be more patient, but the rewards can be disproportionately higher. And I think but are we are talking enough... only foreign capital? Is there interest from domestic capital no, as I well? I think that's changing. Look, I, I don't see a struggle today for good companies to be raising money. I think there's enough money for good ideas, there's enough money that understands the relevance and importance to be patient. So I'm less concerned about the fact that we'll capital be a constraint mm. for these kinds of companies to build. I, I don't think that would be the case. Okay, so what would you be concerned about? If capital is not a constraint, then what would the constraints be that you would be worried no, about? I think, I, I think skilling is an important component. I think skilling is a key piece for these companies to scale. I think market access is an important component. I think corporations, large corporations who have access to customers can provide that conduit. Mm. So I would say those two pieces, certainly patient capital is a requirement, I'm not concerned about it. Okay. And market access is a place where government plays a critical Absolutely. role and they have to partner with us to ensure that, because in India, gov government is one of the largest procurers, uh, yeah, procurers of technology. Mm. So 
and this is something we were discussing with uh, Anna in, in the conference, that what role does government play mm. to create that access for mm. startups? Mm. And uh, she, came, she had a brilliant answer. She said one of the focus areas for governments is to invest in areas where normal investors or industry will not invest, mm. like agriculture, mm. rural health, mm. etc. Mm. These are areas where you need innovation and you need scale. Mm. So how can the government ensure that we invest in, they invest in those areas uh, to provide the access to startups? We'll take a quick break, but we return with our conversation with Devjani Ghosh and Rishad Premji.